team, rtfc.bacon.icecream.com. What's going on, everybody? It's Rich. I'm here with Eric, who's moving his microphone into place. So we just had that whole conversation about me not doing the intro, and then I just realized I don't have my mic anyway, so <laughs> it wouldn't have helped. Yes. That so, would have been an awkward intro then. Yeah. I mean, no more awkward than it is right now, I guess. It's uh, Team yeah. RTFC, Bacon Ice Cream Productions. Hi, everyone. We're here with uh, something a little different. We uh, did another sealed <laughs> pool. Uh, you'll probably see that on the screen in a couple seconds. Um, and what we're doing with it is we are using one pool, and we produced a deck out of that, that one so, pool. So like, basically, this, it's a thought exercise. We yep. both took the same sealed pool, and we decided to see how different our pulls, like, not our pulls, but, like, how how different our choices would be. From yep. character cards to to battle cards to kind of get an idea if we think alike, how different we think, if there's a way that one of us should be rethinking the way we approach things, things like that. Um, yep. So this was suggested to me by Dan Anthony the other day um, at the target tournament. And I was like, that's a really good idea. I think it's a cool thought exercise from other people. Yep. Um, so we decided we we're going to make a video of it and maybe we'll play, maybe we won't, but we wanted to kind of talk through it. Yep. Um, so Rich has all of the characters in front of him, and I'm guessing that it's aligned correctly so that they yes, can see that. That's correct. Yep. Um, I kind of kept the guys I chose and the guys I eliminated off to the side. Um, so why don't you talk about your thought process when you were evaluating your characters? Because what I do when I am looking at my pool, and I this is a very new concept for me but i kind of look at my characters get an idea of them and then i look at my battle cards and kind of go where do i fall with are there playable cards or they're not playable cards mm -hmm. and then i kind of sort that out by color and then i come back to the characters and see do i have anything that actually fits with my battle cards like is there synergy is there not synergy like the raider nova storm likes black upgrades right but do we have is there enough black upgrades to justify running Nova Storm? Right. So right. Th those are that's what I mean by the synergies of, of what I'm like. We have Major Soundwave, Rumble, and uh Ravage. Like, could that be a thing? Is it strong enough to really consider? Um, but I had to go back and look at the battle cards to see could I consider that or not. Um yep, yep. and I said, Why don't you suggest how you do it? And then I just said how I evaluate how I start out my evaluation. Sorry. That's all right. No, no, it's all good. So, um, so I guess for those of you that can see or cannot see, I guess we'll go down the, um, the characters first. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to butcher this name. Detritus. Detritus? Yeah, why not? That's or how we're going to say it. Detritus. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I'm reading that upside down, too. Yeah. All right, so Detritus, he's a wave four card. Um, Private Fire Drive. <clears throat> Red Alert, Raider Ravage, Raider Rogue Hugger, all those are Wave <clears throat> 3. Major Prowls, Wave 3, Raider Nova Storm, Raider Rumble, Private Fix It, Raider Hyperdrive, they're all Wave 4, and then Major Sound Waves, Wave 3. Just so everybody knows. Um, so, <clears throat> what in my decision process, um, I had uh, kind of a choice between like two or three first you have to what i always do is i go by star cost first i look at my characters i figure out all right what's going to fit in 25 stars or less um if you know that like during your pulls you see a lot of star cards come out you know you're looking at them and you're like all right well that might be helpful can i fit them in a deck can i not that kind of thing. Well, that 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 goes back to my. I lay out my things. I get an idea for what I have, and then I go back to the battle cards because I had a pool a pool at one point that I had zero star cards, so it was not in my best interest to look at under twenty five. I had to sure. start to figure out how I could slot twenty five. Yep. So, um, so what I always usually go with first um, because it's again it's sealed. There's not there's, you know, you hope for some synergy, but there's not going to be a lot of synergy all the time. Um, and sometimes you're just going to get outright screwed. You know, you're going to have like 
well, now in Wave 4, you can get, like, half characters and, like, unplayable characters right off the bat. Um, so, you know, I always look at that first and then find out, okay, cool, can I fit out 25 stars and what's my strategy? Am I going to try to go wide here? Am I going to try, like, something crazy because I know I've got, like, something, like, a really beefy character that's, you know, like a... Um, well, you know, like a, you know, like a shockwave or like th- that kind of thing. Like he's immense amounts of stars, and you might be able to fit another character with him, but you know, like he's got like tons of health and right. you know and he can a hit a lot of armor. Yeah, and... he, he's got some armor. And he hit real hard. Does it justify like spending more than like ten or eleven on a, on a character? Um, you know, that th- I look at it all. Right, you're looking at your stats. Yep. And then I look at abilities and find out what's going on. Well, let me let me ask there. a question as a follow up to what you just said. <clears throat> yep. You talked about going wide. At what point do you decide yes or no to wide? So my determining factors are: Do I have characters that are, um, you know, like five or six or less that actually have some stats to back them up? You know, like greater than one or zero defense. Um, and a bunch of those characters that have greater than one or zero defense, like can I can I actually set that up? Because um, if you if you try to go wide and all of your characters have like zero defense, then you're just asking for trouble. Like because even unless you're fighting against somebody that is doing the same thing and doesn't have a lot of damage output and is relying on either Pierce or they they went defensive, mm-hmm. you know your matchup's going to be looking pretty not nice if you can't do damage output or you can barely tick away. And then you get hit, and then somebody dies. So, well, at that point, I guess my question to you is, are you looking at their attack, or are you looking at their defense? Like, because... So, I mean, it, you're definitely looking at both, but... Well, no, because if you're going wide, would you would you take very defensive guys if they can't do any damage anyway? Well, I'm asking you the thought process. I, I'm it, not critiquing. As long as, they, as long as they have some damage output, like two or three, and one or two defense... They're in the running because if you're wide and you're going in wave in this particular wave set, you know, um, siege one, siege two, there's a lot of black, right? So you can load up on your pierce and then like do some chip damage and you're wide enough where you're going to get those attacks in. So you're going to be getting, you know, like up to two, three, possibly like six on a wheel turn if you're you're five wide and the other guy's three, mm-hmm. you know, like so you can do that, those calculations. But, you know. First, you got to look to see do the do the stats play out to even make that decision in the first place. I think you also have to factor in: Do you have the weapons or combat pumps in order to right. support that? Also, so yes. the black pip was kind of where I was trying to get you to go because that, that I think mm-hmm. that's definitely a consideration. Yep. But like, I had a sealed pool, the one that we I lost to you. I didn't have enough weapons to do anything, and right. you went wide, and I didn't have enough weapons to support the guys that could bring back weapons like i had trigger happy but couldn't do anything really with him so i just kept trying to bring back the one weapon that was worth it right right um so it's a thing to keep in mind when when looking at who your team is so mm-hmm. off the bat you can kind of start figuring out who you don't want to play either right. guys that don't have the good enough stats or guys that don't have the the abilities that actually do something like Right. Yeah. So, I mean, off the bat, you know, if we start if we start eliminating yeah. down, let's start eliminating down. <clears throat> um, so right we both I know we both kind of fell around the same thing. So, yeah. So so right off the bat, um, anyone that had like zero zero slash one, you know, so we're talking Nova Storm, Rumble, Fix It, Hyperdrive. Now, are you considering their alt mode or their or both modes? Well, both. I mean, there's zero ones. So there is, you yeah, know, like. So some of them are zero zeros, but you know, like there are some zero ones in here. So I I took that into consideration and I'm like, you know what? They're too squishy and you know, their costs are okay, but you know I couldn't remember what Nova Storm's uh defense yeah. was in alt mode. Because gotcha. you had it's, it in alt mode. I was yeah, like one yeah, one de- yeah. defense. So I was like, you know what? That might just be too like too hot to handle for me, so that's it, that's out. Okay. So that leaves me with these guys. <clears throat> so you've got you got Road Hugger, um, who's not too bad because he has got that built-in pump. Um, you've got Ravage, 
and we had Soundwave in this pool, so I was like, okay, there could be synergy there. Um, so there's so there's not not too and it's it's not too bad in this in the stat range if you're considering Shockwave. Then there's Prowl, um, and he's he's pretty cool because <clears throat> he's got that uh, attacking an enemy with a weapon doing two, two damage to it. Like that's pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got the three up here. Um, uh, Detritus. He's got the when you flip into the mode, you can play a uh, black, a black pip card, which is awesome because you know a lot of cards are black pip. Well, it's it's awesome <clears throat> if you have enough black pips to justify it. Right. You know, but if you only have five black pips, do you, is that a consideration? His ability. His ability, maybe not, but his stat pool is pretty sweet. You know, right, like but five fourteen two or six fourteen one, like that's not bad. But if it came down to at that point, like just th this is why I go back to my battle cards yep, when yep, making yep. that decision mm -hmm. is is detritus better than prowl if you only have four or five black pip cards? Yeah, so then it becomes maybe not right. Like you know, then you, then you're like okay, maybe I'm heavily considering prowl at that point because you know, like I don't have enough of the pierce to float to play around with, you know, like the black pip, black pip cards to play around with right. that. Because right stuff. now, primarily, what we are looking at is Detritus, Prowl, and Major Soundwave are 10 or 11 stars. Right. So it's kind of, are you picking one of them to be the centerpiece of the deck and then build around that? Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with you that Prowl and Detritus are kind of along the same lines. Detritus seems to edge out Prowl a little bit, but he is one more star. Right. Uh, and that's when I, you know, I would go back to my pool and see how many blacks did I have. Yep. Um, so as we moved along in that, in my decision making, um, on this side, um, I started like seeing right here in this, in this three detritus fire drive, red alert. Um, you've got the battle master. So like when, when this character dies, it's going to become something that's going to help you out. Um, it's fire drive. I, you know, I'm imagining everyone knows what fire drive does. Um, if not, go watch a blaster or a sound wave or yeah. like any <laughs> pretty, any of the deck pretty, profiles pretty from much, Gen Con on. Yeah, like pretty much he uh, he turns into anything a, I played. Yeah, it turned mm -hmm. into a three damage weapon. You can um, he draws you a card when he attacks. He draws you a in card. bot mode. He you, you becomes can, a three weapon. You can throw stuff at him, make him bigger. You know, but he's a battle master, which is also important for the evaluation. Exactly, exactly. So because you know if you're low on weapons, um, he's gonna give you one, and if you're low and if you're high on not so not so great weapons he becomes one anyway and you can replace it and all that fun mm -hmm. stuff um and then you got red alert who you can flip in and do the uh the cool like hey i flip and remove a damage if you need to do that and then he's got that weird one where you can flip and do the the white white orange blue um on the flip gets you plus three mm -hmm. um which is you yeah, know which is okay it's an okay ability but i mean I, I would find that in this particular scenario, maybe you're not going to see that go off too often, um, unless you get really lucky with your with your card pulls. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. But well, again, that's that's another character that when I read what he does, I went back to I wouldn't evaluate him until I saw what my what my pip selection was in the pool. Right. I had to I had to figure out could I support that or do I just scrap him? Because even though his stats might be okay. Mm -hmm. It's still, I mean, he's a 311-2 or a 311-1. They're okay. They're not, yeah. like, huge. But could I get him to be a 6? Or do I not have enough? Like, I've had pools where there's two oranges. And it's like, well, don't run red alert in that case. Right. You know, or don't red, run red alert if there's a better, a different option. Right. You know, right, you right. just go, eh. Yep. But I think our pool was kind of pretty balanced this time. So yeah. I think it, it was... An easier like okay, mm -hmm. I'm more advocating the flip back and forth. Keep evaluating your battle cards versus your um, your characters at the same yeah. time, just to make sure that you're not like shoehorning in. You're like, oh, I've got seven stars. Let me run red alert, and then you don't have enough of one of those colors to to justify it. Right. Like if you don't have enough whites or blues, or you know, it, you're just putting yourself in a thing where you don't get to use the character, and maybe you could have picked a different character to fill in. Even if it was just Roadhugger, like he might have been better in this situation depending on what star cards you had than fitting it because it fits the twenty five stars. Right, right, right. So, um, so yeah, I wound up going with these three. Right, you yeah. you narrowed yours down. So for me, I narrowed it down to either the same three that Rich has or 
running prowl, red alert, and fire drive. Um, and that is going to become the conversation of how I came down to that and where I would make different tweaks on my choices based on which lineup I decided to go with, um, which we're going to talk about pretty much right now because yep. we're going to switch over. So yep. um, when I get a pool, what I typically do is I go through and I organize things by color so I get an idea, especially for th guys like pr Fire... Uh, yeah, nope, not Fire Drive. I'm looking at, pointing at Red Alert. I don't know why I said Fire Drive. Um, see, to see if, can I justify it? Do I have enough blues to keep a guy alive if I need to keep him alive? Or do I have enough oranges to be like, I can be aggressive and maybe if I have enough oranges, I can go that wider route and then just try to, to get in there. Um, so I organize by pip. And then what I try to do is eliminate things that are completely unplayable from the start. Um, so for me, my choices on unplayable started out with, Oh, and then I also sort out my, uh, my star card. So, um, because those are the contingent on whether or not I have room for them. So, um, if I go with these three guys, I have a star card available to me. So our star cards were even the score and two EMP waves. Um, and if I went with these guys, I was going to run the even the score because I wanted the extra oranges um, because of uh, red alert. So let me let me pause this for one real quick. Pause the conversation or pause the just pause the conversation. Oh, because you want to flip the. Yep. Oh, OK, sorry. I forgot the camera was faced the other way. All right, cool. That should be much better. All right. Sorry about that. So um, I sorted out my star cards, which were these three. And then I looked at all the other cards. So I, I Blast Suit is awkward. It's hard because it's like you have a limited amount of things and you go, man, it could help me keep something alive. But at the same time, it has no pip and it might not do a lot sometimes like to get return on investment. Oh, and it's a star card. Never mind. I didn't even realize it's a star card. Well, that goes there, and I just eliminated it immediately because of that. Right, right. I just saw that there was a blank pip and, and uh, eliminated it. The other card that I decided was unplayable, uh, well, it is unplayable, except for the fact that it has a white pip, is Conversion Engine because we didn't have any triple changers. So playing it wasn't an option. It was only going to be in the deck for the pip, and I decided I was not going to consider it, even if I needed the pips, because... If I ever got it in my hand, it was going to be a you know something that I would struggle to get out of my hand. <clears throat> okay. Did you agree or disagree with that? So in those cases, my matches. Yes. Are your pip cards? Well, I mean, there are our pip cards. Yeah. So that. But but yes. Okay. <clears throat> so you kept the conversion engine in. In the deck. In the deck. Okay. Um, so from there, I started evaluating my. Did my individual pips mm -hmm. make sense? Um, so with other cards, so like things like smoke thrower, right? I cut it because the bold two, I didn't have enough orange to be like, I want to get this all the time. Mm -hmm. the, the counter to that is I kept in the basic combat pro protocol for two reasons. One, mm -hmm. it's not a weapon. And it's yep. got an orange pip. Now, it only gives you bold one. Smoke Fleur gives you bold two. But the only way that this was going to help me is if I flipped oranges or blacks. And this could help me in the same situation. And mm -hmm. I just decided that orange was better to have, especially because of Red Alert. Because I pretty much was going to go Prowl Red Alert, Fire Drive, or Detritus Red Alert, Fire Drive. Right. So... Um, I cut the smoke thrower for those reasons. Okay. I didn't find I had enough. Now, in this matchup, because I would have that even the score for the double, uh, for the double orange, mm -hmm. maybe I would have reconsidered it. But that was my like I had three cards that I was really hard on, yep. but I still was like, mm, I, I think I'd cut that. Okay. And the other two because of the pressure they put on my hand are brainstorms. I feel like brainstorm in this format, unless you can figure out a way to draw cards on a regular basis, which I mean, fire drive does do. Mm -hmm. 
but also Fire Drive <clears throat> wants you to have extra cards in your hand so you can get that that KO shot. Yep. Um, and it doesn't do anything on its own. You have to have other cards in your hand. So yep. you're basically are putting yourself in a position to be down three cards in your hand. And while I like a lot of the actions that are available in this set, I feel like there's not a lot of the times where everyone like, I want to play three cards in my hand, have one card left, and then hope that I top deck from there. Right. Sometimes I'd rather play one card this turn, one card next turn, and just, you know, because it, it, I don't know, maybe that's not the right thinking, but that's the thinking that I have. Well, in that turn, in those terms, I agree with you, because those are another two match that... Okay. And then the last two cards, which I really struggle. Well, okay. Pre process, I didn't really struggle with as much. I like it, but I don't like it. I liked it for the green. I liked it for the ability to get rid of a, an upgrade, but I also didn't like it because it didn't do anything for me really in combat. And if I really wanted to get rid of something on Rich's side, I didn't feel like it, helping him was worthwhile. Also right. agree. And then <clears throat> this is one I was on the fence about. So there's two in, in the pool. Yep. I decided I was going to cut one. Okay. Mostly because it, it was just kind of that weird moment where it's like, is it going to be helpful when I get it? Or is it just going to be a lose less? Um, and so I was just kind of like, uh, I don't know. That's one of those things like I'd sideboard it in if I felt like the uh, my opponent had a lot of pierce. And keeping one in still means I have the opportunity to draw it. But I just, I, I needed a spot and that that basically was was a cut for me. Okay. Um, and if I was playing this pool with the Autobots, I was going to play the Compact Shield because I felt like I had enough... Autobots to justify the fact that it was black and wasn't really doing anything. Um, I guess even if I did it with Detritus, I could run it, but it just made the I would only run it if I was running all Autobots mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thing. <clears throat> okay. Um, for Detritus, I was looking at these two basically as the replacement for the Compact Shield and the even the score because I wouldn't have the the star cost for the even the score so that would come out yep and basically i was trading one black pip for another black pip in hopes that that would end up on fire drive and slowly drain him or something sure 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 um i felt like this was an easier include if i went a little bit wider because then there was a better chance of it going off when i wanted it to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and not being able to like reprocess it to like to kill it like because it has to be when the the character KOs. So like there was lots of options where that could go away and you don't get any benefit, especially if you put it on a higher health character, then you're just like, here, let me do some damage to myself. And, Oh, and then you got rid of it. Awesome. I just helped you beat me. Right. Um, so th those were the two cards, but basically this was only really going in, not because I could play it, but because of the, uh, orange pip, just cause it kept my ratio in the same range that I wanted. Okay. Um, so we apparently have, you have other cards that you cut, so why don't yep. we talk about those, and then maybe I can say why I decided to keep them, or... Yep. So the, the ones that are kind of matchy, um, I cut Overwhelming Advantage. Sure. Um, because I just didn't see a reason for just having the orange pip. I know ratio might hurt, and if we wind up playing this out, it might, that might be a difference maker, because... Of the other three cards you're going to see, really kind of mess up my ratio. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but I just didn't see the, a reason a reason to play. No, I agree. There, there isn't a reason to play other than Red Alert. That was the reason right. why I was trying to keep that or one more orange pip in there. Yep. So also, likewise, because of the unknown, I eliminated Squishm Like Bugs. Okay. Um, and the reason why is because, again, you just don't know. Like, you know, you, you'd be playing something and the likelihood of you having at least one of one of the characters that's able to use the card is pretty high. But if you went wide, then there's just no like you're not you're probably not going to get to use the card. It's orange, but it's also orange. 
but also you in this format you could have a five star guy that can hit a four star guy and still do an extra damage if you played it. Right, that's true. That's true. It, but yep. it's orange is the primarily reason why I didn't cut it. Yep. I also cut basic combat protocol um, because. I know it's orange, and I know it gives you the bold one as utility, mm -hmm. but I just, I felt that in my successes in doing this, I had, like, a kind of, um, like, specific mode, and I'll talk about that in a second, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, but that didn't fit that mode. Um, and I also cut Erratic Cannon. Um, okay. <clears throat> I want you to have share your thought on that, and then we have to have a conversation. The reason I cut Erratic Cannon is because it's relying on you to get the combat flips out, mm -hmm. to get the white, to give you the plus three. Mm -hmm. And I know, yes, there isn't another card that I could have replaced it with to give you a plus. But it's also a weapon that when you have Fire Drive there, like when you, have, when you start pulling all those weapons out later after Fire Drive becomes a weapon... They're just cards in your hand that, you, okay, maybe you could put it on the other character, but if that other character's dead, then they're dead cards in your hand. No. Then, yeah, you can you can feed them to fire drive. Yes. I get it. Uh, yes. You can do that, too. I was thinking about that. Just as, no, I, was that you, just as I was saying that. That's why you're I like, was like, okay. Okay, yeah, you can just feed them to fire drive, and that's that's okay, too. And, yes, it's an orange pip, but All right. um, I just, I was trying to take away as many unknowns as possible Sure. Um, when building the deck. So, then in... The difference making, you're going to wind up finding out that these four cards that got taken out that are orange, the cards that are in my deck are either blue or black. Right. And I understand that. But here's the conversation I want to have. Mm -hmm. Then why are you running Royal Alert? How many oranges do you now have in the deck? Yeah, I don't have a lot to get his ability done. Yeah. Right. I think I've got like four. Right. Yep. So at that point, would it make more sense to run someone that's smaller to fit those extra... A EMP waves or like run Nova Storm who is at least a little bit beefier on the, the bot mode side mm -hmm. you know to make up for the fact that he you're probably not going to trigger his ability so that's yeah no that's yeah. true um so because how many oranges do you have that's what I was I think it's like four let me just I can start I can start looking at that as you're talking about well some more stuff I will say I have five I have five, so six oranges in in the deck because no matter what, I was going to have that extra one. And if you cut three of them, you should have three. I, I do have three. So, yeah, <coughs> I was keeping in mind trying to trying to see if he was going to trigger in whatever scenario mm -hmm. I was in because mm -hmm. a six attack is a pretty good attack. Yep. Um. So that's pretty much that that's that was our thought process you went a little bit more defensive mm -hmm. yep um yeah because in the deck you know it's like i've got so there was three dismantling claws in this pool yeah so they all went in yes mine too um so there was that the other because they were also a weapon and yep green which is the other reason why i was okay keeping like the overwhelming advantage because then I could like green something back and not worry about. Yeah. So there's also infiltrate, hidden fortification, and point position. I have a question. Yep. Why did you cut either the erratic cannon or whatever and leave in the defensive configuration? We only had three armors. Well, that's true. And one of them was a star cost. Yeah, uh, yeah. You have a point there. Something to so, keep in mind. Yep. It, it was on my cut thing. It went back in because of the orange pip. Right. But if I were not trying to keep as many oranges in, it would have been one of my early picks be to go because my... I just didn't have enough... Like, I'm never going to play this on a character and be like, yes, let me now go get a, another you know armor right, right, right. like the best scenario that i could get was get the uh guarded posture and a force field on someone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or the compact shield i guess you right. know but it just not it didn't seem like it was worth the spot unless you needed the pip right because right, right. that's another one that if i ever got it in my hand 
I'm going to try to to dig it out with a with a green and just like just get it back in the rotation. Yep. Yeah. No, I was thinking about that the extra armor thing, and then was thinking about, um, the Pippin, get out of here. Like getting getting the getting the reveal to put the that extra thing like, because yeah, I have both, I have both compact shields in here. I have. There were two. No, there's only one. But I have the compact shield. I've got the force field, and I've got. Wasn't there another? Yeah, the guarded posture. So I've got the other. I've got the the armors in there. Right. But you know, like late game, you can load somebody up if you have the opportunity to, because you get the extra slot. It's kind of cool. It, I don't know. Who knows. I mean, we can play it out and we can see how often that that comes down to it. But I yeah, feel yeah. like I feel like my point is, I feel like it's a niche case where it's helpful and less of an opportunity for you to want it in there unless there's a specific reason. Mm -hmm. I would almost say maybe running the erratic cannon because how many whites do you have in the deck? You have right. a lot of whites. There's six yeah. or seven whites. Yep. So that gives you an opportunity to get the plus three, which this as I have said uh, to people, and I will credit John Palmer for reminding me of this at one point, is um, it's not about not... The game is about winning, not not lose, not lose. You know, like, the longer you keep yourself alive helps, but if you can't end the game, it, it doesn't help. Right. Like, you still have to be able to win. You yeah, yeah, stay yeah. alive all day long, but if you can't kill anyone... Right, no, I know. gotcha. Yep. So... Now you just messed up my own quote, but I remember because I used to say it to people, Mike Campbell, he would right. be like, I have all these things. I'm like, how do you win? He's like, uh, I'm like, right. How do you win this game? He, when he played magic and I was like, yeah, what's your win condition? Go from there. Oh, your win condition is this. Excellent. Now we can work on this. Don't don't give me a I want to do all these crazy things and then have no end result. Right. So. Um, yeah, so maybe that was a better swap. I understand yeah. what you're saying about, but at the same time, if you, if you're at a point where you're playing defensive configuration and force field and guarded posture, yeah, you probably only have one character. Right. That's true. So, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, who knows? That helps you win the game. The others help you not lose. Right. That's true. Yep. And I'm not saying don't t play them. I'm just saying this with that limited pool. If you had more armors, I'd be like, eh, I can see it. Right. Like, having three armors, I just don't. Yeah, and maybe that was an oversight on my part just looking at it. But, yeah, it was just one of those things where I was like, okay, I needed some things. Right. Like, I primarily, if I were going to play the, if I had to play the basic combat protocol, it's probably going on right alert. Because I want to try to trigger his ability. Right, right, right. right. You know, like, yeah. or the spinner wheels. Yeah. Spinner rims. Yeah. yeah. I'm probably putting that on red alert because I'm trying to, to get that to, to trigger. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so I think it was an interesting thought experiment. Uh-huh. Um, um, I don't know if we'll do it again. We might do it again, maybe not on video. Yeah. Um, But if... Anyone has comments, concerns, whatever. Don't, I don't care about really the concerns as much. But, like, if you have feedback, let us know. Um, you know, we're, we're, what, a week away from the launch of yep. Siege? And, we'll, you know, we're going to probably do a couple, try to get a couple more videos in over the course of this week and then try to um, do some stuff at the only game in town on launch night where you have a launch event that evening um in between class i have class so there's some juggling i have to do with my schedule but um you know we'll we'll have some more content and then we'll have some constructed decks going on and yep. but this is something we need to practice for for the energy on invitational and so yeah. we're it's something that i need better practice so yeah that's what i got you have anything no, I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's, you know, it gets having these conversations get you in the mindset. It definitely helps with, uh, you know, like paying more attention to 
you know the cards as you're as you're looking at them, because um, I have a tendency to look at look look at cards once, see their value, understand their value, and then go okay, and then not double back to check. Just like okay, that's a great ability, and it'll get you some stuff, and you have those things that might make it help. But does it make sense right now? And that's the that's the thing I need to like. I need to go and review it again. Eighty percent of my decision making was based on my my battle cards because it almost because this is a game where you get you're building a twenty five card deck out of thirty six options. You have eleven cuts. Right. You want to make your like if you have to include cards that don't do anything, you want to make sure those cards at least do something in the pip ratio in the whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. help you in some way like. That last the last video we did, I had a lot of blacks. Well, there was a point where like my unplayables were just unplayable, and I like needed to make two cuts. And I was like, "Well, that's okay." I I ran a lot of black. I won those games because I had a lot of black that at least did something when I attacked you. Right. And whether I, like I had two of the secret, the decipher whatever it is, the the one that like you never played a. a I'm trying to find it. Yeah, Decipher. You never played a secret action. But I had two of them. I was like, well, they're staying in because at least I can do something if you ever get it. And they're black. So at right. least then, you know, yep. maybe I do a point of damage when I attack. Exactly. Yep. I was thinking about it, and I kind of feel like their balance on the black pips could be, could have been, if you flip a black, it negates a point of pierce. Wow. Wow. Because then it's like, oh, well, you know, like, the problem is Pierce, like, black pips are really great against blue decks, but not so great about in orange decks. So if you're playing an orange deck, why run black pips? Because does it matter? Well, maybe it could because it, maybe that would knock down the Pierce on someone. I don't know. It was just, a, it, I mean, it's not how they did it, but I was just right. thinking about, like, could they have done it where maybe mm -hmm. then more people would want to run black pips to be the counterplay? Yeah, that would be kind of cool to you know. think about. Because there's enough in, like, Wave 4 that there's, like, a couple of orange blacks that are like, okay, that's actually not a bad card, and the pips aren't terrible. Like, you know, Rock Toss is not, like, who puts that in a deck unless you absolutely need it. Right, right, right. But, you know, it was orange black, so maybe you put it in the Constructicons deck. I don't mm -hmm, know. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Uh -huh. But I don't know. I want to revisit that with Wave Four. It's one of the things yeah, on my constructor cons. Just yeah. maybe a fun Friday and yeah. make myself not feel like Devastator is trash. But you know, hmm. that's that's a whole different conversation. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not trying to on <laughs> camera. I just that one was a I couldn't <laughs> couldn't contain it. So that's all right. All right, cool. So I think we're good. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, Leave comments if you want. Yep. Like, we'll, subscribe, all that other junk that yep. people require yep, yep, yep. YouTube to. Yeah, I mean, if you're liking it, hit that hit that sub button because, you know, it helps us oh, out. Oh, yes, please like, hit the subscribe button. You don't have yeah. to hit the like button, even though apparently some metric is there, because then that adds it to your, like, your liked videos. And yeah, like, yeah. That's annoying because I go, I try to support all the other people that I, you know, and I hit that button because I know it helps them. Yep. But then I look at my my liked videos and I'm like, I'm never going to go back and watch most of these because I've I've absorbed the information or I've like, like the Wrecking Rule guys. I don't need to go back and watch them play that match again. Like, but I'll like their video because at least it gives them that metric. Exactly. Yeah. But I wish there was a way to like like it, but put it somewhere else. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like like it, and now put it in this folder where like it's a. Transformers videos I've watched compared to like some videos that I want to go back and reference, right. like some exactly. other outside of Transformers projects that I like. Yep, yep, yep. Or like I watch, I sometimes watch the uh, Transformers uh, Basics. Okay. And, and he does like he does a breakdown on like a character or on a storyline or something like that. And it's like it's usually a ten or twelve minute video. But like some of them I like want to go back because I want to learn more about it. Right. And like those are ones that I want to like like and return to. Yes. Like I might use this as a reference point for most or like I'm in school. Maybe I want to go back to a video multiple times to learn something. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I wish that YouTube had that instead of just like here's this pile of likes that you have. <laughs> I'm like oh, okay. Yeah. Can I organize it? No. Okay. 
Can I tag it? No. Okay. All right. I'm done on this rant. We can cut this at any point. That's all right. All right. Cool, guys. We'll Thank see you. you next time.